Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you, don't forget my website jasonburnspreacher.com and uh, it's good to be with you, I want to talk to you about um, the five books of Moses and modern scholarship. Now I'm in pain here on my face so forgive me if I'm not as erudite as I normally am, <clears throat> so forgive me. Um, I just want to talk about the issue of modern scholarship and the five books of Moses. Now, in the 19th and 18th century, um, modern scholarship said that Moses could not have written the five, the five books, uh, Exodus, the Pentateuch. And a number of reasons. One is the idea of Valhausen saying that there are different writers, J.P. and all the rest of it. So there were different editors, different writers. So the Valhausen hypotheses, um, first of all. Um, and then there were some various other arguments Moses couldn't have written because the writing wasn't so so late as, as the date of Moses, if, if even Moses existed. So there wasn't any writing at the time. Uh, the Pentateuch had a very... Uh, mature idea of God where um, the other ancient religions didn't so uh, Moses couldn't have developed such a, an idea of God so late so these were some of the arguments that modern scholarship used in the 18th and 19th century well the Valhausen hypothesis was influenced by Hegelian philosophy. Hegel believed in thesis, anti antithesis, synthesis. And when we realised, when we found out that actually there were other ancient religions that actually believed in one God, the Valhausen hypothesis began to crumble. Because it was showing you that it, it, it was not... It, it, the, uh, the the book of Moses, the five book of Moses didn't develop in this kind of Hegelian synthesis, historical, philosophical way of thinking. And so you can see that uh, Balhausen hypothesis was not based on evidence, but based on a philosophical understanding of history, which didn't fit historical analysis. And that came into the 19th century where evolution was applied to historical studies. And evolution uh, theory, when it was applied to historical studies, people realised, scholars realised, well, again, evolutionary theory does not fit into the historical data because, again, we see even early on in the history of ancient religions that there was a belief in one God. There wasn't this kind of development of polytheism to the idea of one God. There was one God right at the beginning. Then we found tablets in the ancient world where it categorically established there was writing. So we found tablets in Babylon, we found tablets concerning the Assyrian Empire, etc, etc, etc. So that showed that there was writing even at the time of Moses and it just completely destroyed the whole theory of Valhausen hypotheses. I remember studying at theological seminary some time many years ago and I remember being in the Old Testament class and I remember challenging my lecturer, uh, I think it was Dr. Swanson, and I said to him, I said, why are we studying the Valhausen hypotheses? Because it's been debunked and it's been destroyed and it's completely on the critical m floor it's just it's just like collapsed and I said to him why are we studying it it's collapsed and he says we've got to study it because we can't put anything else in its place but you seminary students and you uh, theologians are still teaching learning and teaching this hypothesis yet it's been debunked it, it's been it, uh, Valhausen was it, it, is a Hegelian 
philosophical understanding of history, which has been debunked. Then, in the 19th century, it was tampered with evolutionary theory. It's been debunked. And the critical analysis of the Pentateuch that was in the 19th century has been completely destroyed. People like Albright, etc. So why are theologians today, why are theological students today learning about this hypothesis? Why are theologians today teaching this hypothesis when it's been completely debunked? Another argument, they say, well, uh, Moses couldn't have written the Ten Commandments because there weren't any commandments at the time like this. Then we find that there were, com there were ancient re religions and societies that had commandments very similar to Moses' Ten Commandments. And then the critics say, well, uh, Moses must have copied the commandments from these ancient religions but then we find that Moses Ten Commandments is much superior to these ancient religions but you see how the critics won't give up one minute they say Moses couldn't have written the Ten Commandments uh, Moses couldn't have uh, produced the Ten Commandments well we know God produced the Ten Commandments but just I'm um, just just hear me out that they, they say that Moses couldn't have, have given the Ten Commandments because there were no commandments like that at the time. Then we find commandments similar to the Ten Commandments. And then the scholars say, well, Moses must have copied the commandments. But then we find that the commandments of Moses are much more superior than these ancient religions. But the critics will not give up when they are debunked, you see. Well, they say, well, Abraham couldn't have existed. But then we find a Babylonian inscription that names a name, a person called Abraham. Not saying it's the same Abraham, but it shows that the word Abraham was around at that ancient time. And then all the archaeology that we found, all the issues of uh, Abraham doing a deal with the Egyptians for a cave, and all the rest of it, exactly the same kind of deals, that and, and simp uh, various deals that was done at that ancient time, we find... So we find that modern scholarship, when it says we have the answer that Moses did not write the five books of Moses, gets demolished. But yet, in the academic world today, modern scholarship will not give in and continues to teach that Moses did not write those five books. I could go on and on and on. I could give you, literally, two to five, maybe ten hours of lectures. I have notes that I've studied. And I can give you at least two, at least five, maybe ten hours of lectures on why Moses wrote the five books of Moses. The answer to this, uh, the, the point of this video is to, to theology students to be very, very cautious about your theologians who tell you things in your seminaries and in your universities and in the books you read. Be very, very cautious. And to the theologians out there, be honest. If a theory isn't working, Go back to the drawing board and start to believe what the Bible says about itself. And you'll find that archaeology will come in line and show you that what the Bible is saying is true. And to us as people, lay people in the pew and on the street, take modern scholarship when it says things with a high brow and says the Bible can't be true because of this, or the Bible can't be true because of that, you just wait and there'll be archaeology or some evidence that proves the scholars wrong. God bless you.